All right, so back to the project at hand. Uh, what I was able to do was take those nuts off and that whole threaded rod comes out and now I can take this cover off. But the other thing I did was I discovered that I had also damaged the um, take the cover off. I had damaged the unit responsible for holding this open. What did I do with it when I took it off? Oh yeah, I was in the process of I was in the process of removing this when the uh, camera died. See how these brackets are all bent up? These were screwed to the underside of the lid right here. There's a screw there and a screw there that sheared off, and then the other two screws partially pulled out. So there's supposed to be two screws in each of these, and uh, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to reattach these brackets to the underside of the cover. But right now what I want to do is I want to see what I can do about straightening this bent metal here. Oh, I got a better idea. Get this nice thick piece of steel. Um, this looks like it's like three quarter inch plate. Um, sit that right in there. Now I can see just how far out this is. And so I'm gonna clamp this in position right here like this. And then I'm gonna use my dead shot mallet to tap this in. And the reason why I'm not gonna use this, the ball peen hammer is because I don't really wanna go smashing all of this off. I am gonna be repainting this, but I plan on just sanding this lightly to scuff up the surface so I get a good bond with the paint. I'm not taking it down to bare metal. All right, so I'm all clamped up. One more look before I give it a good whack. Okay, so now I got it straight to my liking this way, but yeah, I got this straight. But now what we got here is uh, this right here is pushed down completely, so I'm gonna have to figure out how to get that. Okay, I'm done with the straightening. I'm not gonna bore you with all the details, but the combination of the wood block lifting it up on the floor um, was able to uh, straighten it pretty good this way straighten the back side there you can see it's nice and level across so all right uh, I just removed the uh, just gave this a quick wash down some denatured alcohol um, I'll do it again after I uh, sand it um, I just removed the remnants of a switch that was here one of the things that was wrong with this unit, he explained to me there was a switch here that had broke and he had just bypassed the switch so now when you plug it in it just starts. Also, on the inside of the cover here there's actually a couple of metal loops. I don't know if you saw those or not. Right there. There's one there and there's one there. I asked him about those and he said there was a fluorescent light that actually when you lifted the cover you had a switch turn the light on. I think there might have been a switch here for the pump and then maybe this switch was for the light. Not sure. Anyway, anyways, what I want to do is uh, there was obviously some kind of a plate or something here, and it must have been some goop or something that they used to hold it down, or I don't know what that is, but I'm going to try and clean that off with a little bit of solvent. All right, so here's what it looks like uh, cleaned up with a little elbow grease. I got most of it out. Going to be good enough. And uh, now I'll do a little bit of sanding. Looks like he used this to paint something, huh? You can see a ghost image here. Something laid out there and got some overspray on it. Guess he f looks like he was using red paint and figured out, ah, who cares? Well, all right, we're gonna try and uh, sand out any uh, really big imperfections, like right here, there's a little raised ring of something that they didn't want to clean off. And uh, got a couple spots here, I don't know what that is either, that's kind of in there. Well, best as we can. I'm not gonna get too fussy with it. All right, I'm just using my, uh, I got an old Norton sanding block. Uh, it's actually kind of handy. And I can just use any old scrap of paper in that. And uh, just gone over the whole thing. I went all in one direction and then reversed the grain going in the other direction. And I could see there were some high spots here. You can see, so those are down to the bare metal now. Um, those are gonna show through, I think. And unless I build it up with a sandable primer or something, I'm probably gonna end up just having to live with that, which I'm, 
I'm okay with that. And I'm just running my hand over the whole thing and feeling it. And for the most part, I'm satisfied, except for right here, there's a, I don't know if you could see that or not, but there's a good old snot or something on there. I'll try and get that with the razor. So all I gotta do is, uh, oh, yeah, how about a razor blade? All right, let's try this again. Take two with a razor blade in there. I don't know what that is. Something. There we go. Sticker or a drop of goop. All right. Sand that. We should be good. Okay, I just wiped it all down with denatured alcohol again to remove the dust. I like to use denatured alcohol because it evaporates quickly and leaves no residue. So I don't have to wait very long. And uh, now I ran my hand over it and I still feel this area right here is really rough. This is the overspray from when he had something on here that he painted and it left that ghost. And this is, I can really feel this. I just tried sanding it again and it still really sticks up. It's bumpy. So that's going to... That's gonna uh, telegraph through the uh, the new paint coat, and uh, I think I'm just gonna take a couple minutes to try and get that off of there. So now I'm gonna get a little more aggressive. I'm gonna use my random orbit sander with a fine grit sanding pad on it, and uh, I could use a flap disc on my angle grinder. I've got one of those. That'll take it off in seconds, but that'll go right down to the metal. Uh, way too quickly and again I'm not trying to go all the way down to bare metal because if I went all the way down to bare metal then I'd want to primer coat this thing and I mean I'm not looking for an automotive grade finish or anything even near that I just kind of want to get it a little bit prettier why I don't know just because why not so uh, I'm going to use this random orbit sander but before I do that I'm going to grab a dust mask because I haven't been using one up until now because I've just been hand sanding it haven't been really getting a lot of particulates in the air, but this might get some stuff flying up and I certainly don't want to be breathing that. All right, that did such a good job that uh, on this uh, overspray area that I decided to hit the whole top with that, uh, that uh, sander. And I'm uh, happy with the smoothness I got out of this. And I actually haven't wiped the dust off of this yet. I just got done washing my hands. There's evidence right there why you want to wear a dust mask. Those uh, particulates, you don't want to breathe those. Lam out, you big dummy! You get the plastic in the wrong place. Actually, uh, I'm just painting the top right now, so I've got my plastic on the back wall there, trying to keep the overspray off the floor, and I'm going to use the cabinet to hold up the top while I paint it, so I can get this edge all around and the top, rather than laying it on the floor and worrying about not being able to get the uh, the whole edge. So I put the plastic over the uh, over the unit put the cover on that now I don't have to worry about getting paint I don't want overspray on the side of, of the cabinet I'm gonna paint the sides of the cabinet later 